Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is smallest positive missing number and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem says that we have been given an array of n integers and we have to find the smallest positive number missing from the array. So they have said including zero, but actually the array will be having all sorts of numbers, negative, positive and zero as well. And we have to find the smallest missing positive number and positive means starting from one, right? So we don't have to include zero in our answer, right? So this is our whole question. Now this particular question, like uh, the problem statement is very short, but I found this question particularly interesting because it requires you to think a little bit and uh, you will see like uh, at first thought, any method that you will think either will consume some extra time other than O of N, it can be like sorting using o N log N. Otherwise, if it is uh, not consuming extra time, it will consume extra space. But there is a very interesting method with which you can solve it at O of N time and O of 1 space, right? So let us discuss that particular method. So the very first thing that you must have observed is that we are only concerned about positive numbers. So we are only concerned about positive numbers and we can safely ignore, we can safely ignore numbers less than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 0, right? So these are the numbers that we are concerned about and we only need to worry about them, right? And we can just ignore these numbers. So what do we do with all the positive numbers that we have in the array? So the next observation that uh, I would like to share with you all is observation 2, let's say. So you will see what can be the maximum value of the answer. So if I create an array here, Let's say there are just four elements. So what can be the maximum value of the answer? So let's say here it was one, then two, then three, then four. Then the maximum value in this particular case, when all the elements are arranged in increasing order or in any order, it says that all the elements from one to n should be present. That in that case, the answer will be n plus one, right? So the maximum value, the maximum value that you can attain as an answer is n plus one, right? So that means you are only concerned about values starting from 1 to n, right? So both of these are included. So we are only concerned about these values in the array which are our, which are from the range 1 to n, right? So, so this part was uh, very simple. So if only these values are important with this observation, you can easily solve this problem. So how we can solve this? Let's say we have an array like this, right? And uh, the positions, let's say, it will be from zero based indexing, right? Like this. So let's say this is the position of one, this is the position of two, this is the position of three, this is the position of four, and so on, right? Let us assume that these are the expected positions. Now let's say whenever I encounter a one anywhere in my array. Let's say I encounter a 1 here. Can I put this 1 into this particular position? Yes, definitely I can. Right. And if I encounter a 2 anywhere in the array, let's say I encounter a 2 here, I can put this 2 here and whatever element was present here will come back to this position, right, at position 5. Similarly, I may encounter other elements as well and all the elements I keep encountering, I keep putting them in these positions. Right, I put 3 here, I put 4 here and so on, right. So what will be the actual advantage of this particular method? When you try putting all the elements in order like this, so at the end what you can do is, you can just traverse through this array. After putting all the elements in order, you can just traverse through this array and find the first element that is not present in my array. So let's say there was uh, no 5 in the array, so here is some arbitrary value x because it is not equal to 5. Right. So 5 is not present in the array. That means any random number could have taken its place. Right. So whenever I see 5 is not present in the array, I can just directly return 5. And this will be my answer. You must have thought of a method of sorting the array. Once you sort the array, you find the first number which is not present in the array. Right. So this is what you do with sorting, which takes O of n log n. Right. 
right because of the sorting part but here you see without even sorting the final array that i get is exactly similar to what a sorted array would look like right so what is the property that i am making use of here so i observe this particular thing that all the values that i need must be from 1 to n right so if all the values are from 1 to n i can assign each specific position to each of those values right and i can try putting them let's say the value 1 at the first position and value 2 at the second position value 3 at the third position and so on so it will behave like a sorted array now you might wonder what are what if duplicates are present in my array so let's say one has already got its position right and we again encounter a one here so what happens now so first of all i'll check whether at that particular position one is already present or not if one is not present only then i'll put this new one at that particular position if one is already present then i don't need to touch it right there is no use of touching it so you might wonder where will this particular one go so it can assume any other place in our array it will not matter however like for example this is position 7 so an element 8 should come here right so whenever we encounter an 8 so 8 will take its place and 1 will go to its position let's say 8 was coming from here so 1 will go here it doesn't matter where it goes it's just that all the elements that we have in the range from 1 to n should be at their respective positions right or at least one copy of them should be at their respective positions to denote that this element is present in my array right so once you like put all the elements like these you will have some kind of a sorted array it is not actually a sorted array but the first few elements will be in sorted order and whenever you encounter an element which does not match the order you can just directly return it right so how do we write this so for each element you are going to create a while loop right so inside the while loop you need to check three things right first of all the array of i that is the current element should be greater than zero right the second condition is array of i should be less than n plus one right it should be from the range one to eight so this is these two condition will help me to identify that the array of i element which i am considering is in the range one to n and let's say my array of i element is this its correct position should be array of array of i minus 1 why is it so because you see for the element 1 the correct position is index 0 so that is why i subtract 1 from it to find the correct index so this is i is the correct position and array of i minus 1 is it is its expected position so if these two elements are already equal that means 1 is already present at its correct place so i will only make an operation if these two are not equal right so if all of the conditions are satisfied together i will do one thing i will swap array of i comma array of array of i minus 1 right so this is as simple as it is now when i do this for all the elements what i will have is at the end some kind of a sorted array where the initial elements will be present at its correct position and I just have to find the first element that is not at its correct position. So that is how you can solve this particular problem. Now let us have a look at the code. So what I've done is I created a simple for loop from 0 to less than n and this is the same while loop that I was discussing just now. So there are three conditions. These two first conditions are to check whether the element current element is from the range 1 to n or not. Right. If it is from 1 to n, this particular condition is to check whether the element that I am trying to place at a specific index is already there or not right so if it is already there then no need of swapping the positions right so that is why i check they should not be equal right if all of these three conditions are satisfied i just swap the elements now what i do is i just traverse through the for loop and whenever i encounter a position where array of i is not equal to i plus one right so it's similar to why we were doing minus one here we are doing i plus one here because at the zeroth index it should be element one right so if these does not match i can just self return i plus one and if all of them are matching that means all of the elements from 1 to n are present in my array and i can just return n plus 1 because this would be the first positive integer not present right so this was the solution for today's problem of the day let me just quickly submit and show you that this works so you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct 
and uh, i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you're one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of course and you can always subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later Share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.